I just want to be the one you love. Hey guys, it's Mary B bringing you the mayhem. And Lucasfilm has no idea what they are doing. And at best, we have a situation over there where the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. But I think at worst, we have a situation where we've got a bunch of liars on our hands. Now look, I know that's probably not news to you guys, but it keeps coming up over and over again, where one person says one thing and then another person says another thing. And nobody has any idea what is actually going on or what actually happened. Or straight up flat out they're lying to us so we have a little article here today that goes and debunks the notion Colin Trevorrow had said that it was JJ Abrams idea to bring back Emperor Palpatine but now we have another source that tells us that it was actually Kathleen Kennedy so we're gonna jump right into this here I'll let you guys see what exactly it is that I'm talking about and why why it is that the waters are so muddied here so Palpatine's return. Oh, I'm sorry. And I do want to thank Steve Kenobi for sending me this article. Appreciate it so much, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. The nonsense that we can't even nail down who did what, who said what, and what actually happened. So Star Wars Palpatine's return was apparently Kathleen Kennedy's idea. So Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which is currently pushing toward a 700 million global haul, brought back Skywalker Saga, brought back Skywalker Skywalker Saga. Oh, brought back Skywalker Saga villain Emperor Palpatine for the story's in-game, pitting him and his final order fleet against Rey and the Resistance. Yeah, sorry, I just hate that name. Though Colin Trevorrow, who was originally tapped to helm episode 9, had had credited J.J. Abrams with having the idea to bring the Emperor back for the conclusion. A new awards daily interview with the Rise of Skywalker co-writer Chris Terrio seems to shift the narrative a bit. Shift the narrative? Is that, what, is that what's happening here? It's not shifting the narrative. There's no narrative to shift. It either happened or it didn't. Was it K.K. or J.J.? Who was it? Who who decided to abs to absolutely destroy Anakin Skywalker's legacy with this with this decision? Who decided to do that? We don't know. We don't know because they won't tell us. I, and at this point, I think it's ridiculous. They can't even remember to tell which lies anymore. And I'm sorry, but that's what I see this as: is flat out lies because they don't even know what's what exact. Oh, who told this lie and who told that lie and what narrative are we filling out today? This is what happens when you deal with liars. They can't even remember what it was that they said last. And that's one of the things that we find so frustrating with Disney Lucasfilm is you can't just be honest with us. Why can't you just? Tell us what happened. Why do you have to constantly flip the script and do something different and say something different than what you said before? Why can't you just be flat out and honest with us and say, okay, yeah, it was a crap show behind the scenes, guys. And yeah, maybe maybe we should have done some things differently. Why can't you do that? Why can't you just come forward and, and be be transparent with us that would go so much further with fans if you would just be honest about things but you keep why can't you do that i don't understand so in it, uh, we'll go ahead and continue with the article. In it, Terrio credits Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy with wanting to bring back Palpatine. Kathy Kennedy and Michelle Rejwan had a clear plan. <laughs> Sorry. Had a clear plan for where they wanted things to end. <laughs> no, 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 they didn't. Uh, they gave us a lot of creative or a lot of freedom within that. We knew that Rey and Ren were utterly key to this trilogy, but we also felt that there was no way that we were going to find a path to redemption. We're not going to find a path to redemption for Kylo Ren, the son of Han and Leia. And look, I think a lot of people would have been fine with a path to redemption for Kylo Ren if that had been something that you actually showed us and along his story arc instead of just thrusting it into the end of episode nine and going, hey, he's redeemed now, guys. Uh, look, we recognize that there was the, the struggle between the light and the dark, but at the very end of the last movie, he recommitted himself to the dark. He wasn't left on some ambiguous note. It wasn't left with, okay, he's he's still struggling with this. No, he had reaffirmed. He was 110%. He was he was the new leader of the first order. He was, this, this was the bad guy, guys. This was the bad guy. This was the one we had to deal with and then you turn and flip it this time it's such a muddled mess it's such a complete and utter muddled mess so we're gonna skip down ah 
what is this thing? So we're going to skip down here a little bit and uh, read this part right here. And this is what, one of the things that I found particularly interesting. So when asked if Palpatine had always been the plan prior to episode nine, Terio said, well, I can't speak to Kathy's overall intent. There was That was certainly discussed and was discussed before I ever came on. Are you just a little bit uncomfortable with discussing whether or not it was the overall plan. I think this guy, I think he genuinely has a problem with, with flat out lying. And I do tend to believe that it was probably Cray KK's idea to bring back Palpatine. Although, Palpatine, although I wouldn't put it past the hack known as J.J. Abrams uh, to do something like that. I do, but I do tend to believe that this guy is just uncomfortable with flat out lying. And so that's one of the reasons why you see him be like, well, I can't speak speak to it, guys. Because a lot of people, at least most people, are uncomfortable with sitting there spewing hot garbage into your face, right? It makes them legitimately uncomfortable. So I, I think it's interesting that even the people who worked on this movie, worked with Kathleen Kennedy, and are supposed to be buddy-buddy with her, are still like, mm -hmm, I mean, I don't want to say that she actually had a plan from the beginning, because that's a flat-out lie, and everybody knows it. So if I say something like that, everybody's going to point at me and go, okay, you are a liar. You are a liar, sir. So he's careful here, and he, he kind of dodges around the question a little bit. Well, I don't want to say say but it's just it's just another great example of how we will never get the truth out of Lucasfilm for what actually went down behind the scenes with this Rise of Skywalker movie we will never get that from them we'll probably be able to piece it together from bits of information that come out to us because you know the internet's full of detectives and it's full of a lot of passionate fans who want to know and understand what happened with this with this trilogy what happened Disney because you are never going to tell us so we're just going to have to find out for ourselves anyway guys I wanted to deliver this information to you let you know what's going down thanks again to Stig Kenobi for, for bringing this to my attention guys make sure you hit that like button hit the bell for notifications so you know when I put out new videos thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later love love if you enjoyed this video leave a like and comment down below and hey feel free to follow me over on Twitter see you guys around <laughs>